Hey everybody, it's Dave. Just uh, doing a quick demo for the people who uh, didn't see this or didn't work on it a couple weeks ago and the people that did and just want a refresher. I'm gonna try and keep it short. What we're gonna create is two spheres. Okay, you don't have to do all these. Um, and as a matter of fact, none of you have to do these unless you wanna do it as extra credit. The stuff that was in the computer was more than likely deleted unless you saved it onto a flash drive. So that's uh, par for the course with FIT. Um, so just so you know, next time we'll have a flash drive. Anyway, so we have highlight, we which is the bright spot, including the acute bright spot, very bright, and shadow core, and then reflected light, which is down here, which is bounced light off the ground, and then a cast shadow. These are the four components that make things look three-dimensional. And then of course you can add a texture. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. So first order of business is we need to open up something new. So we'll go to new under file. And then this pops up and I usually go to print because print will give me as the first thing letter and letter is 300 DPI. That's a professional grade size. Always go for that at least. So now the size of the piece, now that's 300 pixels per inch. It's now eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna switch the orientation over here and now it's going to open up as a landscape. Okay, I hit Command-0 to bring it as big as I can on the screen, and now I'm ready to rock and roll. So before I get to going, you're gonna go up to here, which is under Window, Workspace, and you're gonna go to Painting. And as you can see here, things change, okay? Um, right now, I've kind of deleted, I'm gonna go up to Window, Workspace reset painting. As you can see, this is with the default. Um, I don't like this setup, and that's just me. So when I want to get rid of stuff, I just hold Command and I close. I just go to the name of whatever is here or the symbol. And I don't need a clone stamp. This is stuff you guys don't need to know, but I close it. You guys, you do need to know it if you want to like just get the basic stuff out. All right, so this is good. This is called brush settings. You need that. This is called history. You need that. Um, the swatches is cool. Um, the other stuff is not in the way and there's layers. That's what we need. Okay. So first thing we need is a elliptical marquee, which is up here. It looks like a dotted circle. And when you first open it up, you'll get a, if you don't do anything, you'll get an uh, ellipse. We want a circle. So we're going to hold down shift and it constrains it. So you have it as a circle. Boom. There you go. So now, um, you are going to take uh, the first thing you need to do with this is create a layer. And a layer is next to the trash can down here. Not this trash can, but this trash can right in the layers palette. And we click that little symbol and now we have a new layer. We're gonna go to, um, might look like this when you first get there, but um, some of these tools have other tools buried with them. So you hold that down, hold, click and hold, and then you go, ah, there's two tools here. Get the paint bucket and I'm gonna dump um, a purple color that I like, which is I'm going to pick from here. And there's a purple color and it's on its own layer so I can move it. Yay. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, we're going to hit command D to get rid of the dotted lines. That's a very important step. A lot of beginners forget to do is, you know, when you have the dotted lines, the dotted lines say to you, Hey, uh, this is where we're working nowhere else. So within the, 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 the circle is where you can paint. You can't paint outside the circle. So very important to get rid of them so you can start to do other things. So now I'm going to create a new layer. And this one I'm going to call, you can just click the name and I'll type in purple. It's good to label your layers. Then I'm going to click another layer. I'm going to title this one red. And of course, I'm going to pick red up here. Uh, there's a number of ways to pick colors. You can pick here. Okay, and you can pick here, all through here, and pick around, you know, it's very, very useful. Okay, so we'll pick red, and now we're going to go back to this thingy, which is the elliptical marquee. I'm gonna hold down shift to make it, make this uh, exact circle, and I'm gonna move it where I want it. And then I'm gonna dump using the paint bucket, which we found was nested before, and I'm going to dump the paint Okay, now I had to hit twice, okay, to get the whole thing in there. And the reason, you know, event, I actually do want it to look just like this. 
However, our machines at school don't do that. So for some reason, mine does. Okay, so now I've got two circles and I'm going to, I want to put this one, I could stuff this one behind like this and get the desired result. However, um, you're going to miss out on learning something new. So I'm going to put it back up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going down to purple and I'm going to go up to the word select. Now I want to select it again. Um, I, I go down to load selection and you'll see this pop up. It says purple transparency and I'll hit OK. There you go. Um, now um, what happens is we want to cut out this part of the red circle. So all I have to do, since I can only do things inside this line here, inside this purple circle, if I click to the red layer and I just hit the word delete or the key delete, it does it for me. And now when I hit my eyeball, there it is, a red crescent moon. So now I have my two shapes and I want to paint in them. So you've learned how to select and how to call up a selection and cut out part of the one that was behind it. Okay, it's a good first step. Next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to take the paintbrush and um, the paintbrush has settings. Okay, so up here when it, it defaults to 100% and if you click on each one of these tools, this changes up here. If you notice as I go through these things, this changes up here. But you want just the paintbrush, not any other type of paintbrush, the regular old paintbrush. It defaults to normal at 100% opacity and 100% flow. Now this is important stuff because when I'm working, I use, um, I use three uh, settings, okay? Three modes as we say up here. Now I'm on the paintbrush and I want to go and I want to set it to screen, okay? Let's look at the difference. But first we got to select the purple. So I'm going to go down here and every layer remembers what's on it. Okay, so if I hit, if I'm on the purple layer and I go up to the word selects and I select and I go to load, then I see purple transparency. That's purple, good. Hit OK, and now it's selected. Yay. Okay, so now I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to go to normal like I had it before. The opacity is at 100%, and I'm going to pick a, a purple color. So I use this thing, it's the eyedropper tool. Click in here and now you've seen this changes because this is the top color and that's what you want to know, know what the color is. I'm going to lighten it a little bit. So I moved it over, click there, and hit OK. So now I take my paintbrush and I'm going to make it very large by holding the shift key. Not the shift key, I mean the bracket keys. They're next to the P key. So you can make them smaller or bigger just by hitting the, the brackets. Um, you want to make sure it's a soft brush. So when you go up here, you can see brushes. These are your brushes you have. They're in little folders, okay, except for that one for some reason. And um, you can click on them to see what kind of a result. Now, if you really want to get a good look at it, this is just up here, the brush icon. If you go over here to the brush settings, you can see a preview of it. Plus, there's all these controls. So we'll get back to that another time. Um, so you want to make sure it's a fuzzy brush and here's normal watch. I'm, you can see I'm painting inside the circle only. It doesn't paint on the outside. That's because it's selected. So you can see it didn't get any brighter. So let's go back a step, go back to load selection. I'm going to switch it now to screen. Okay. And I'm going to start to paint. As you can see, it's really getting brighter with each stroke. Okay. Almost to white. I don't want that, it's a little too strong. So let's go back and I'm gonna show you what the, the changes I'm gonna make. Leave it on screen, because screen lightens with every stroke that you put down. Everyone gets successively lighter. I'm gonna bring it down to like 40% or so. Now here's the key. You see I hang the, I keep the cursor very large. By making it small, you're going to get a lot of this, which is terrible. You want to have, let me go back up, you want to have a larger, that's uh, loaded, yes. You want to have a larger uh, brush and you want to hang it over like you're surfing, like hanging your feet over the board. And you just keep hitting this 
until it keeps getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And now if you make the cursor smaller, you can keep going in like this, keep going smaller until you finally get a hot spot like that. That's awesome. You've just created a little bit of a dimension. We've created the highlight with the extreme highlight right there. And we've created, we haven't done any purple down here. So that's screen. Screen's awesome. It's, it's just, I love it because I never have to change colors. I can change colors. I can make this lighter. It would, the lighter you make the color, the more extreme it, it does things. And the more extreme the color change will be, it'll be quicker. Um, if you also play with the opacity, you can bring the opacity down, never at 100% because the change happens too fast. So let's demonstrate that by darkening something. So now here's the third thing. We, we, we know about normal, we know about screen. Now we're gonna to go to multiply. Multiply, actually each stroke multiplies it darker. So I'm gonna go with a little darker color. And I'm going to open up the paintbrush fairly large. And I'm going to just move through and you can see it's getting darker now. I'm gonna shrink it a little bit because I wanna create a little bit of a shadow core like that. Now down here, it kind of defaulted to bounce light. You see that it's a little lighter down here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch over to screen again, and I'm just gonna lighten it up down here again. Okay, you don't wanna make it as bright as up there. Bounce light usually is medium, so bright, dark, medium. And now um, I'm gonna hit Command D to get rid of my outline, and I'm going to then um, create a shadow. And how you do that is you just get the marquee tool again, this little dotted circle, and you kind of make a ellipse. And once it's underneath, you have to create another layer. And then you're going to pick black and you're going to use something called the paint bucket. Now the paint bucket might look like this when you first open it up. Um, it's That's a gradient tool, okay? Um, the paint bucket, you know, you have to, they're nested together. So you have to hold down you have to keep your cursor on there and then they appear. So I'll go to the paint bucket and I'll dump black. And that looks okay. Um, let's hit it again. Let's get rid of that little edge. And now I'm gonna move this underneath my uh, purple circle. And now I'm going to need to blur it out. So I go up to the word filter. So you've learned a little bit about the paint bucket. Now we're gonna blur it out by going to the word bl filter, then blur then Gaussian blur. And then once that is up there, you have a slider bar and you can make it as fuzzy as you want. I'm gonna make it slightly fuzzy, like around there. And now I'm going to go back. Now, when we had the paintbrush before, we had that 41% opacity. Same thing happens with the, the uh, eraser. Up here, the eraser is a fuzzy eraser. That's how I know, because it the hardened slider here goes all the way down to zero. So I can see it's fuzzy. And then it's at 26%. If I wanted to make it 41 like I had before, that's fine. And now when I go to the shadow and I start erasing out here, you can see it does a nice job of doing a big transition. That's because it's a big cursor. The whole thing, it's a big circle. If you do small circles, like a smaller cursor like this, you're gonna have this kind of stuff. Doesn't work as well. You want it to be more like this. Okay, nice transition. So that's how you do that. Now you would apply the same thing up here. You would just select this, this um, red crescent moon by clicking on it and going select, load selection. Hit okay, it says red transparency. And then you would start painting in the highlights using the paintbrush, using it on screen keeping the opacity low. And you would make, to get this highlight, you would shrink your cursor. And then uh, you always use a big cursor to kind of paint in an area and you hang over the edge. So I'm not gonna repeat this whole process because um, it's just gonna eat up time. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get um, a texture. Now I have a texture and here it is. 
And now I'm going to drag it, this important thing, drag it to the PS down here in the dock. And it'll open up in its own layer. And we learned the first week that you can use your move tool, which is this cross. Okay, and you can drag it up. Once it gets to this name up here, you're, you're holding the mouse or you're holding the pen down and you bring it down, you let go. So now I have this, this piece here and I deselect because I have, I had that deselected, the circle. Command T <coughs> will, will allow me to resize this. Holding shift, I drag a corner until I get the texture to cover up and I'll just stretch it because it doesn't matter. And then I hit okay when I know I want that. Okay, great. So now we're going to go back to the purple layer and we're gonna select it, load selection. We're gonna, now you can't see it too well, but it's there, it's selected, the dotted lines. Now if I go back to my layer, which has the, um, I go have to go back up to my texture layer, because when I'm, if I hit delete, that's not what I wanted, Command D. I'm sorry, and let's go back in here. Okay, so we did the wrong thing, okay? So here's what I did is I selected the purple. Now I'm gonna select the outside of the purple and you just do that by going up to select inverse. Once you have that done, hit delete. You've clearly gotten rid of the outside and now this is now a circle up here. So in order for us to, to get this to work right, I'm gonna move the purple up a bit here, make these two closer. And I'm gonna to go to this layer, which is my texture. I'll just write in texture, right? And then I'm going to go up to the word. Um, actually, I'm not gonna to go to a word, pardon me. All right, over here, just like with the paintbrush where we have screen and multiply and all this other good stuff, so do the layers. So I'm gonna go down and see what uh, overlay looks like. And that looks really awesome, right? Let's see, let's try a few more. I know the good ones. I'm gonna to go to soft light. And I like soft light because it's a little, the texture's a little softer and it's kind of appeals to me. Um, and then the, with then that's how you get texture on the sphere and how we got this over here, all this kind of stuff. Um, so let's go over to here. I'm gonna get rid of that, we don't need that. And I'm gonna go back to this. So here's the interesting part. Um, and you know, we're gonna talk about this um, later, but you can paint into this. So we go back to the paintbrush and we have to merge these two layers. So if we hold down shift and click this both, you know, both layers, then I'm going to go up here, which is this little stripey thing in the corner. And I'm going to merge the layers like that. Now it's on its own layer. These two things are now fused. So I'll take my paintbrush. I'm going to make a much smaller brush here. And I'm going to actually switch over to multiply. And I'm going to get a proper color. So I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, which is right here, and go here and click there. Now I have a dark color here. And I'm going to use, just going to paint in here. Now, if it's too dark, like I just did, and I don't like it, I'm going to go and take the opacity down much lower, to like 20%. And I'm just going to play around by making a kind of a hole, just like we did in our uh, in those brick walls, right? So do that. And then I'm going to switch over to screen. And I'm going to pick a good color, like something light, fairly light, like that. And now I'm going to brush along here, along the edge, just like what we did on that assignment. And I'm just going to, you know, if I see an area that I want to capitalize on or something, I'll just kind of make a, you know, paint in some of these. It'll become more apparent, but when you zoom out, you can see now I have this little hole, which I've created, which was just multiply and screen. And that's it, guys. Um, you've learned basically how to use um, multiply and screen with the paintbrush and the opacity is very important. Same thing when we erased, we used a lower opacity and I used a big cursor to make big sweeping changes like 
like this, where is it, uh, like this area right here, or this darkness in here, you know, because I use multiply. So that's the main thing. If you use a small uh, cursor, small paintbrush, it's not going to do a good job. It's not going to do, you know, so big areas, big paintbrush, small areas, small paintbrush, like I showed you with this last texture thing here. And that's that. Um, also, you learned a little bit about selections. We learned about um, loading a selection, um, which every layer has a memory of its selection. Um, and I hit here, and now I have the circle is now selected again. We learned about inverse selection, which once we hit inverse under the word select, now I can paint um, out here. You know, I'd have to, let me switch over to black but not on the ball. So we are paint, allowed to paint everything, even over the red. So there you go. And, um, and that's that. So to the next one.